This mini lecture about global climate change talks about the impact of global climate change on extreme weather events. So there's a, a lot of different types of weather events that are impacted by global climate change, and we'll discuss a few of these in this mini lecture. One that you hear about a lot in the news is the intensity of hurricanes. Hurricanes over time have become more intense on average, and that's because as ocean waters are warming, they're able to supply more energy to hurricanes. And so they, the hurricanes have more energy associated with them, and they also have more precipitation. We see about a 20% increase in precipitation near the storm center of a hurricane. Also, as sea levels are rising, we see that storm surges are able to go further inland and higher up along coastlines, and so they're causing more flooding due to storm surges. Another extreme weather event that we see are extreme temperatures. And so we're seeing more record hot days and record hot low temperatures at night, and we're also seeing less record cold days and less, less record low night temperatures being recorded over time. Um, one example of a heat wave recently is one that occurred in Europe in 2003, and this heat wave was on the scale of a heat wave we haven't seen in about 500 plus years in Europe. It led to 30,000 deaths, um, in particular in areas where people are not used to that kind of heat and they maybe don't have air conditioning in their housing and so um, people were overwhelmed by heat. Um, we also see that as temperatures are on the rise this leads to more heat waves and also regional droughts in areas like the desert southwestern United States so that's California, Arizona and some of the other states right around this region. Uh, these extreme what the extreme weather also can lead to floods and so we're also seeing record rainfall events um, with more intense flash flooding and more intense regional flooding. So an example is that in the Midwestern United States there was a 500 year flood that took place in both the years of 1994 and in 2008. So these floods were separated by a period of about 14 years, and yet they were both considered to be 500-year floods, meaning these floods, floods of this scale only occur approximately every 500 years. So those were une it's unexpected to see them that close together. Um, also in 2010, Nashville, Tennessee received a flood that was considered to be a 1,000-year flood event, so it's something you only see about every 1,000 years. So then I know what you're thinking, you're saying, how can you have global warming cause both floods and drought? And it does seem to be kind of goofy, but the answer is fairly simple. So when you warm up the atmosphere, that atmosphere can hold on to more water. So there's more water vapor floating around in the atmosphere. And then this water vapor, it stays in the atmosphere longer because the atmosphere is holding on to more water vapor. And so it leads to a longer period of time between a rainfall event. But that means that when that rain does fall, there's more water coming out of the atmosphere. And so that leads to more flooding or flash floods or even large scale flooding. And so you can have both. Global warming leads to both flooding and drought because there's just longer periods of time between rainfall and then when it does fall the soils are not able to soak up all of that water at once and so it, it, it um, floods across the landscape instead of going into the soil. Okay, thanks.